these two studios are always compared against each other. And, you know, you often think, how the hell can a <laughs> AAA studio, Activision Blizzard King, have a indie studio, GGG, compete with it? How? One has a hundred times more resources, money, more people. The other, less people, less budgets, less resources. Yet, ever since the Diablo franchise came onto the scene in 2000 and Path of Exile came onto the scene in 2013, these two games, these two studios and their games have forever been compared to each other. And specifically in the action RPG genre, the Diablo franchise and the Path of Exile game has always been compared to each other. Now, there are a lot of similarities between these two studios, and there are also a lot of differences. Both have what arguably could be the best two ARPG games in the industry. Now, when I refer to Activision Blizzard King, obviously they have a longer history in the genre, going back all the way to the year 2000 when they launched, sorry, 1996, when they launched Diablo. And who can forget the launch of Diablo 2 II in 2000? That game changed action RPGs forever. And one could argue that they also changed a lot of other genres, but it definitely changed the landscape of ARPGs. Then in 2013, just three guys in a garage built a game and launched Path of Exile and hence Path of Exile comes into the scene in 2013, just a year after Diablo 3 was launched and one could argue floundering. Now, these two games, I mean, these two studios are synonymous with each other. Like I said, always comparing. You can't say one game without mentioning the other game from the other studio. Heck, I've even done it in my videos, comparing the current Diablo game, D4, Diablo 4, with Path of Exile. And more recently, Path of Exile 2, which is coming in beta form in the summer of this year. So I'm not here to give you a history lesson. I'm here to pose the question. Is the landscape about to change in the action RPG world? And I ask that because there may potentially be a new front runner coming up to the fold. Now, before I bring that up, let's do a little history on what these two studios have been fighting out and duking out since Path of Exile came onto the scene in 2013. Now, when I said they have a lot of similarities, they have player bases that are loyal and supportive of their game. Path of Exile absolutely has a very loyal following, a very loyal fan base, and they cannot stand the other studio's game. Irrespective of whether it's good or bad, Path of Exile is king. And vice versa with Activision Blizzard King and their game. Diablo 4 is the best. PoE sucks. And you can interchange that argument depending on what side of the fence you're on with these two studios and their games. However irrespective of the player base, the landscape has changed. These two studios, if I can use a sports analogy, 
are like the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox rivalry. Bitter. Always trying to outwin and outperform each other. Now, respectively, individually, these two studios, when they're asked about the other studio, they all answer the p politically correct way. We don't look at them. We're trying to, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. And you wouldn't expect anything less. And I would imagine there's mutual respect on both sides. However, what makes me pose this question about the landscape changing is the fact that Activision Blizzard King is in a rut, a big rut. And we've seen it slowly erode away with every new Diablo franchise. You can literally say after LOD and Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction, the Diablo franchise has slowly deteriorated. Now it has a huge following and a huge player base. So it takes a lot of time to erode away at such a big machine. Um, but I would argue that that day has come. And I'm talking specifically about Diablo 4. Not even a year old. And already three seasons in, where two of the three seasons have been horrible. Disasters. Not, eh, it was okay. They have been outright disasters. And the player base is not holding back and has not held back. They have vented their frustrations, many vocally and many voting with their wallet and leaving and not playing the game anymore. So with the current state of Diablo 4 literally in shambles right now, and we're not going to get into all the details, and PoE still thriving with poe but coming up and we know the beta for poe 2 coming this summer and all the excitement so they're building on the success of poe 2 and what a wise move see when it comes to path of exile its strength is also its weakness and that is the fact that what makes players gravitate to poe is the complexity in the game, the depth. You really, really have to immerse yourself to truly appreciate Path of Exile. Well, for some players, that has kept them away from playing PoE. Ah, oh, it's too complicated. You need spreadsheets. You need to go on 100 websites. You need to keep, you know, you need to have 7,000 spreadsheets to track. your. And the skill tree is, um, it's so complicated, complicated, complicated. That's the knock against POE, right? It's its strength, but it's also its weakness. So it's kept GGG, it's restricted it from being able to appease itself and, and make itself available to the vast majority of players who play ARPGs. Well, GGG is a wise company and the people running that organization are very smart and they know that. Hence, in my opinion, why PoE2 was created because I think PoE2 will remove some of that complexity. It's not gonna dumb it down to the point where it's super casual, but I believe they're gonna find a balance between the original PoE being complicated, in depth, and just taking it down a notch, making it more accessible to the average player. That's what is so genius about what GGG is doing right now. So irrespective, I don't think Path of Exile GGG games, they're not getting off the podium in the top spot. One or two, I'm not going to argue which one's better. I'm just talking about the top two, okay? That's how I'm going to frame this. I'm not going to get into who's number one, who's number two. I'm talking about the top two, okay? And then 
you can interchange whatever you feel is better, okay? But predominantly, it's been PoE and whatever Diablo game is currently in the market, okay? Diablo, Diablo 2, okay, well, Path of Exile didn't come into didn't come in till 2013, so Diablo 3, right? But now Diablo 4 and PoE, right? Diablo 4 is not here anymore. It's it's not even on the screen. It's it's unbelievably bad for the reasons I've already mentioned. So I would argue there's room for a takeover on this position, and I'm referring to this guy, Last Epoch. I think Last Epoch has a tremendous opportunity right now. And lucky for them, they're launching 1.0 in a week. In a week, we're going to know whether or not Last Epoch is going to be able to deliver on filling this position because right now, Activision Blizzard King, they're floundering. It's a disaster. Even from a back office, the executives, they just changed presidents. It's just, I can go on and on and on. But I present to you the question, do you think Last Epoch can jump over Diablo 4? And we're not going to be asking, what's better, Path of Exile or Diablo 4? We'll be in the future, we'll be talking about GGG and Path of Exile and be comparing it to Last Epoch. Now, Last Epoch is positioning itself as an in-between game. It's not as casual as Diablo 4, and I'm paraphrasing, and it's not as complicated as Path of Exile. It's an in-between. It's an in-between, though, with unbelievable itemization, a trading economy that is supposed to be revolutionary. And if anyone has seen my video on their new trading system with their factions, go check it out. It's on my playlist. It's unbelievable. Everybody's talking about this trading system. They've managed to create an economy for players that want to buy and sell, but also for the players that are solo self-found kind of players, right? They like to play by themselves. They like to earn what they wear as far as gear and weapons. So their faction system addresses both players. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Um, and their itemization, crafting, apparently they've added more endgame. Heck, you have its own developers live streaming the game taking questions live and answering them truthfully, knowledgeably, like unheard of. There is no production, no grand staging scripts. This is natural off the cuff discussions with a developer live streaming the game and taking live questions live, answering the players. And speaking truthfully, from what I can tell, the question is, will they be able to sustain and keep players? And I want to make one more comment before we finish this video. And that is, if you compare all these three studios and you look at the ones that are successful and the formulas that they're using, you'll find a constant thread, a constant theme with the ones that are successful. And I'll let you decide about who I'm referring to. But in my opinion, of these three studios, the two that have loyal fan bases and actually a successful game, there's no coincidence that these games, their characteristics involve a studio that's more concerned about the quality of the game rather than the quality of their financial statements. You'll notice that they are, they prioritize 
listening to the player base and actually making and implementing that feedback into the game. You'll notice that these studios that have those successful games are more interested in creating a game that their players will enjoy and have fun. That is the constant thread with a couple of these studios that I talked about. And it's the main reason, in my opinion, why their games are successful and why the one studio on this list that negates those traits and why their game is floundering. Think about that. Anyway, these are interesting times. And I personally, if I were to answer my own question, I would answer it the following way. If Last Epoch can deliver on 1.0 and not only attract new players, but maintain them, if that is true, then my response would be undoubtedly yes. Last Epoch, the contender, is not going to be a pretender anymore. It'll leapfrog Diablo 4, and we will be comparing PoE, PoE 2, to Last Epoch. We will. Because right now, Diablo 4 is not even in the discussion, unfortunately. Anyway, let me know what you think. Let me know what your response is. Get in there. We have a lot of debates in my comments section on my video. So get in there and let me know what you think one way or another. And please give me your educated, unbiased opinion. I understand we have camps in all these games. I get it, guys. I understand. But really, remove your loyalty hat and have a constructive opinion on it okay constructive put your arpg hat on remove your loyalty hat i'm talking specifically this genre action rpgs are we going to have top two is that going to change i think it is would love to hear your thoughts anyway if you can like comment and subscribe i would really appreciate it it helps grow my channel and as always, if you can like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And as always, we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.